This episode of the YN Crew Podcast is brought to you by Times Cineplex. Hey, what's up? Welcome back, everyone, to yet another episode of the Wine Crew Podcast. We're back after taking a hiatus last week because I was sick. And up next, it's my co-host, it's Del. Yes. What's up? I went to CrossFit today. Ah. Ooh, that- Okay. Strange because I've never done it on a. I don't usually do it on a Saturday, but because uh, two people are flying off for good, so uh, it, that's why also I'm very thirsty now and I've got a drink in front of me. Wait, so you went to do CrossFit because two people were leaving? Oh yeah, yeah, two people from the box. Uh, they are leaving for good, oh, so, so it's like, like a, a farewell <laughs> workout. <laughs> Sure. I don't know why it's 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 like so normal when we talk about it, but when outside people hear it, it's so strange. I don't know. Like you guys have farewell workouts. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. So it's really like a thing. It's like a it's like Comadre- a social what, thing. What do you call it? The com- it's a community thing. Like camaraderie. Com- com- camaraderie. Com- com- yes, yeah. that's the word. Camaraderie. Like we work out together, and I'm leaving, so we got to do this one last time. Yeah, it's it's quite a it's quite a farewell. You know the the guys. <laughs> We've got, we've got, we've got like uh, seven large pizzas. I, I could see it. I could see it as this being nonsense to us and didn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, to yeah it's completely like it's such a no, like it's 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 something that we do. Yeah. I mean, to any other listeners out there who do CrossFit, we're, we're not insulting you. It's just, yeah, this it's, is just yeah, new. Yeah, it's just it's just new to me and Tibby. And um, it's it's new to me that nobody else uh, have, uh feels the same way I do. <laughs> So I have a question because it was a farewell workout. I, I think you guys call it a WOD or workout of the day. Workout of the day. Do you do you guys do like extra burpees and okay, he's leaving so today it's twice the normal amount of burpees. No, we just come up with a new set of uh workout that that is quite intense as well and quite long. It took us took us an hour to finish as opposed to the normal like 15 20 minutes kind of workout. Okay. This is starting so, to sound like a <laughs> CrossFit <laughs> podcast, which is which is not what it is. Uh, up next, it's, it's the other co-host of the podcast. It's Timmy. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? I got back from Japan last week. How did Ooh. you like it? I love it. You want to go, go back? back again? Yep. Uh, I miss it. I keep falling in love there. <laughs> with the food. Yes, food. Yes, sure, with yeah. the food. Yeah. The places. Place, culture. People. Yeah. The efficiency. Yes. The organization. The politeness. Everything. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. What was the best thing you did in Japan? Uh, the best thing I did in Japan is... I don't know. There's a lot of things. I I, I, I rode the bullet train. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to Gun. The, I, I saw the Gundam statue. Okay. The, the one that moves at certain times. Oh. But you a were not there for those times. Yeah, because we were <laughs> trying to f- fit our our limited schedule to somewhere else. Mm, also. Okay. But yeah, you have come back and you are saying the same things that I said last year and what <laughs> many, many other people who have been to Japan say, which is, I want to go back to Japan. Yes. It, it's it's the kind of place where you go once and you, you know, you're you bitten by the bug, yeah. you have to go back. Yeah. yeah. You fall in love. Yeah. All right. it, it is something that you go back to. All right, this week we're talking about Bohemian Rhapsody, which is the biopic of the legendary Freddie Mercury, the frontman of Queen. Mm. Actually, this is more like a Queen movie. Yeah. It's not really a Freddie Mercury movie, although he is the center stage piece of the movie. But we'll get to that later on in the show. Up next, it's the news. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about this movie called Venom and how silly it actually was. Although I kind of liked it. I liked it also. It has opened in China and it's doing really well to the point where it's breaking box office records. So over the last weekend, it opened in China to $34.2 million on the first day of wide release. Now this is even better than 2016's Captain America Civil War, which only opened with $30 million. So we have a Venom movie that's doing really, really well in China. Interesting. Even better than like uh, an actual Marvel Studios movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. So, does this have have any merit? Is does this mean that it may actually be okay? I I don't know. I don't know why some critics do not like the movie, but I it's a totally enjoyable movie, which I think will do well throughout the world. It only did well in China, apparently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the marketing for China probably was better. The the marketing worked. Maybe this is like um, this is Sony. 
actually using Marvel as a stepping stone because Marvel has had their movies shown in China over mm. the last you know couple of years. The MCU is no stranger to the Chinese audience. So seeing like Venom, which is a Marvel character, I guess, and then seeing the Marvel logo on it, this maybe sort of like gave them some confidence. Like, hey, this is like from the studio that brought us all that. So but this... it really isn't. <laughs> So maybe they even use like Spider-Man in their marketing material. It could be like Spider-Man's yeah. uh, nemesis, Venom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man, the dealer. Hey, the dealer. What's Venom in Chinese? I have no idea. I have no uh, idea. What's, what's poison? Chinese? Poison. Do. <laughs> All right. Uh, we just talked about Marvel, and it's no secret that uh, Captain America, who is played by. Chris Evans. Mm-hmm. Well, we will see his last appearance in Avengers 4, which is coming out in May of 2019. Although he has not said the actual words, everything points to it, and it seems like this will be his last appearance as Captain America. Now, this has sort of like, I guess, fueled some speculation, and some fans have come out and so like, oh, we want this person to be Captain America, or it might be Bucky, or it might be uh, Falcon. uh, Falcons, uh, Sam Wilson's character. But someone put out an Instagram post, and it was very cryptic, and it was just a photo of Captain America's shield, which has led speculation this week on whether or not this person could be the next Captain America. And that person is none other than John Cena. God. <laughs> who put out a, who put out that picture? Uh, he put it up. Oh. He put the Captain America shield no. on, uh, on his Instagram. I doubt it. And there was no comment, no nothing. He, uh, he's just I mean, a fan. Who? He's just a fan. Yeah. yeah he's just a I, I could put up a photo <laughs> of Captain America. <laughs> I, I don't think John Cena is stupid. Uh-huh. You don't follow Chris Evans' shoes in filling up the role of Captain America. I don't know. In my head, it's just his theme song for his wrestling. Da, 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 da. I was like, no, I can't. I can't. Oh, when he's like fighting like the bad guys yeah. and he does this. Can't see you me. can't see me. <laughs> you can't see me. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this is not going to happen. I, I don't agree with this speculation. I don't see John Cena as a Captain America. I think he's just, well, first of all, physically, he's just too big and he, he's a little bit comedic at this point yeah size wise if you notice the this was back in 90s i think when uh, they relaunched the marvel universe with new like marvel universe just disappeared or got destroyed and then they rebirth okay rebirth uh, no reborn rebirth captain america he was that size he was john cena's size so he came back and he was bigger better he, the, yeah this was uh under jim lee's uh direction illustration oh. so they more was than, that size they're more than welcome to prove me wrong <laughs> but i don't see it. i don't see it as a good idea but yes sure. so the wine crew is unanimous in saying yeah. that this is not a good idea john yeah. cena i mean you may want it but i don't think it's gonna go find to something you. else no, find, find something yeah, else i mean just, i mean he, he's gonna be in the in the upcoming bumblebee movie yes. so just yeah. stick with that Deadpool 2, which apparently is going to get a PG-13 release. We've talked about this on the podcast before. And we think it's going to be more of like a Deadpool 1 and 2 with all the gory bits and all the swearing cut out. And then they'll make it into one movie. It has now gotten an official title. And that title is Once Upon a Deadpool. It's a really... Really good strategy so far. What, what I can see Deadpool. because it's, it's like a Disney movie. Once upon a time, because it is, uh, they are going to be um, bought over by Disney, right? Yeah. So he's getting ready for to be Disneyfied. So so even the marketing for this is now being meta. Yeah, it has always been. So I think when they come out in December, it's going to be very telling as to whether or not a PG thirteen Deadpool movie can pull in the crowd. Because then you are fighting with all the big players in December. Yes, that's and, true. And uh, to see if it does well, that means it has the potential to do PG-13. I guess so. Here's the thing though. Like, okay, given the choice, would you watch well, Once Upon a Deadpool, which is a PG-13 retelling of the Deadpool story, or Mary Poppins? Oh, Deadpool. why can't I have both? <laughs> I don't have an answer for you, but yeah, I mean, I was just asking, like, hypothetically, if you had to choose. I mean, I've seen that pool, so I'm going with Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. But then you? there's there's new footage, though, for this one. Yeah. Once upon a Deadpool. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, if I've seen both already, I'll probably be going for Deadpool again. Just to see how you might love good or bad uh, a PG-13 cut I'm sure it's be. still funny. Yeah, I'm sure, but it'll be more like fart jokes and... 
Still funny. No, I don't think it'll be fart jokes. I don't think. I think with the new footage as well, it'll it'll be something surprising. All right. Here's something that may be a joke. It's Aquaman and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, James Wan has uh, posted an, an official photo celebrating the film's completion. Okay. So apparently it's now done. Everything in post production is done. The cuts are done. The editing is done. This is going. This is coming out uh, next month in December. So it will be here really, really soon. We'll be sure to get a review out for you guys out there. Are you excited, Dell? Yes, you are. Um, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have no expectation. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to keep my expectation low so they can like, like, prove impress that, you, yeah, impress me. You like do, Venom, you, you do that a lot now. I you, know. Yeah. You keep your expectations really low. <laughs> like this is exactly what you said to me when we walked out of Bohemian Rhapsody. It's like I, yeah. it was, it was, it was fine. I, I, I had no expectation <laughs> because last time I put my expectation high and then it wasn't was it? as good. What was it? Uh, I think it started with Kickass Two. Uh-huh. Ah, but then okay. Kickass Two was a disappointment. Yeah, yeah. and then like you know, I forgot. yeah. Mm-hmm. He has to. So ever since then, it's like <laughs> keeping everything low, unless it's Star Wars. Wait, that was a sort of like a disappointment too, which is the next bit of news. Uh-huh. Star Wars Episode Eight was a disappointment for one of us, and that's Kai. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, apparently, the next Star Wars, which is Episode Nine, is reportedly a course correction for Lucasfilm. What? Now, this did is, they say that? Yeah, well, it's 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 quote unquote course correction. Uh-huh. Uh, this this is more in terms of where the franchise is going because of the lackluster success that Solo, a Star Wars story, had. It, it didn't do very well at the box office. It sort of just made back its money, but it kind of went unnoticed. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of a Star Wars movie. It was not huge. It, it didn't have the impact as movies such as, you know, the the new trilogy or Rogue One. So when Solo did that at the box office, it more like an okay thing. They are sort of ramping up for episode nine to be like, this is, this is, we have to make it big for this one. I see what you mean by course correction now. Yeah. It's not about the story. No, no, it's, it's, it's not about it's the about story. It's about the yeah. uh, direction for the franchise. Direction of the okay. franchise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they better. <laughs> they better. Yeah. Uh, if not, we'll have a very sad Kai at the <laughs> end of 2019. Well, but then Kai also enjoyed uh, Solo. Yeah, yeah. He, he enjoyed yeah, Solo. Yeah, yeah. But he did not enjoy episode 8. Yeah. So the course correction bit is not about course correcting episode 8. That's true. It's still, the episode 9 is still following its own trajectory. It's like, let's let's get back on track. Let's, let's make that money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Disney apparently has already recouped the $4 billion that it paid for Lucasfilm. Uh, so in the span of like five years, they've made back. Yeah. Now this is of course <clears throat> with movies and box office sales and home digital releases and toys and toys. And new series books. on the Disney new channel thing. The streaming the service. Yeah, the Disney, Disney Plus. Yeah, there's <laughs> going to be some new series yeah. with that. It's the it's the best four billion dollars they've ever spent. Yes, because now they're set up to just earn money. Yeah, they've already made back crazy. their money. It's insane. It's crazy. Uh, here's something that may be a little bit crazy. It's Rambo Five. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this week the news is just all over the place, and and I'm feeling a bit good about this 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 episode. Sylvester Stallone. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about how he shared a photo on his social media, and he's starting production of this next Rambo film. And Dell was like. Show me a photo of him, not like the old him. Show him. Oh, yeah. yeah. He apparently sent us. No, he apparently uploaded. Sent me a picture. <laughs> I've been listening to you guys. Here. So this is a picture. I'm Here. listening. Is- <laughs> uh, he, so. he shared a photo on uh, his social media, and it's his first official photo as Rambo in this new Rambo movie. And uh, he's wearing a cowboy hat. Is he in a yeah. rural area, urban? Oh well, it's 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 in the forest slash Southeast jungle. It's, no, it's it's in front of a green screen. It's it's raining <laughs> and just off screen. There's probably a guy holding a diet coke <laughs> for him. Uh, I'll I'll watch it. I mean, it's 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 a Rambo film. Yeah, it's not. It's probably gonna not do well. But <laughs> what do you mean not do well? I, I, it'll do okay because of the fans. Yeah, which fans? People who are in their 60s. Like, like me and Kai, <laughs> who are not in our 60s. <laughs> like, I imagine my dad will enjoy this. Mm. Or he won't because it's so modern. Yes. Modern and gory. Or, and... or maybe not. You know, 
Okay. We'll see. We'll see when it comes out. We'll see. Now, would your dad enjoy this? Apparently, there's going to be a Super Mario Brothers animated movie, <laughs> which is developing, uh, which is in development by Illumination. <laughs> Why would dad? <laughs> nope, he will not enjoy this. <laughs> It was a question. Like, <laughs> okay. would he enjoy it? Now, of course, uh, it's been 25 years since we've got the first live-action Super, Super Mario Brothers, Mario. which was really, really bad. And apparently, the reason for that, they've sort of decided, is that the creator of Super Mario Brothers was not involved at all mm-hmm. with the story or with the direction. This new Super Mario Brothers animated movie is going to be done by Illumination, the same guys who gave us Despicable Me and the Minion movies. Illumination! Illumination! And the Grinch, I think that they did the Grinch as well. Yep. Yeah, uh, which is also out in uh, local cinemas. So, uh, this uh, this is how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be cartoon. like a cartoon. And this is the right step to take, not a live-action movie. And for Illumination, I think the worst thing they've put out is Minions. So, uh, I don't think... Have you, you watched The Grinch? No, 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 no. no. I mean, uh, from the past. Okay. Yeah. I don't think The Grinch... Have you seen The Grinch? No, okay. but I've heard that apparently it's yeah, not Apparently so it's really bad. Oh, um, I, I think that aside from the Despicable Me movies, which were, you know, sort of like a general audience kind mm-hmm. of thing, the Minion movies and I think the Grinch movie, as we heard uh, just before we started recording, is more targeted at the younger Young audience. Man, yeah. So it, it's just silly and it's just... Slapstick. You know, slapstick. That's exactly what the Minions was supposed to be. Yeah. Um. But then, is there a real threat to the Super Mario Brothers name? Or, you is know, it going image? to be like that? Or if is it's it... going to be like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, then it's going to be bad. Because they they targeted the kids instead of like adults. The, the fans. Yeah. Yeah, instead of telling an actual story. It was yeah. just like, Look, check it out. It's just like the cartoon. Do kids now know Super Mario? I think they still do. I mean, those who still have Nintendos. I Try guess. asking your nephews. Um, no, they don't play Nintendo. Yeah. yeah, like I had a. So Switch. if they target kids, who who, uh, who exactly are they? Are they exactly. Audience? That, that, that was my my question because right. I, there are some kids who do play Super Mario Kart. Yeah. Like, so, <clears throat> but so, but a lot of it is not kids. Are not kids. Yeah, they're, they're people our age. Yeah. Who are, are not that old, but um, <laughs> older, <laughs> older. Like when I was in Japan, wiser. The the Super Mario Kart thing in Japan, it's like there weren't any younger people. So it's usually it's like mostly middle middle age. Yeah. No, not not middle age. Like, like people our age. Yeah, adult, young adult, like adults. Young, yeah. <laughs> young adults. That's that's what we are. <laughs> Well, yep. dude, I'm, I'm 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 not that young. <laughs> I, I don't think I want to be categorized as a young okay, adult. adult because young adult is the Twilight. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> yeah. That, All right. I don't know how to explain, but I don't think okay. there are a lot of kids. Maybe this yeah. is a chance for them to introduce the franchise maybe, to a new generation, maybe. and we just hope that they do it well and they do it justice because the first movie we got was just. Bad. It was like who was it? Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, that was that was horrible. Uh, here's something that I hope is not horrible. Although the thought of it has brought some horrible thoughts to TB. Breaking Bad apparently is gonna have a movie which is set to begin production soon. No one wanted this. <laughs> I, just, yeah, I have to agree. <laughs> leave it as it is. It was perfect. The story apparently has surfaced and some of the details are that it's it takes right after where the series ended. So it's Aaron Paul's character and he's sort of following up on what happened to, you know, Mr. White. Yeah, right. It was like a it, it was like a cliffhanger thing. It was like Yeah. Oh, okay. Spoiler. <laughs> I mean, how how many years has this been? I think um, it's like four, three yeah. years, four years. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is this because Aaron Paul cannot get another gig that's not... <laughs> no, that's, that's not true. That's I not true. Yeah, he's, he's, I don't think so. He's got some movies. I mean, yeah, he Which was, are not he was in need. Good. He was in need for speed. <laughs> <laughs> it, okay. Uh, <laughs> give me a job, bitch. <laughs> And he was in Triple Nine. Uh, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, okay, um, Brian Cranston, who obviously we know really well because he played Walter White, uh, he says he would absolutely return for the movie if he was asked. So he has not been asked. So he has not been asked. <laughs> but he's knocking though. No, he's not. <laughs> he's like a, he, this yeah, is not knocking. It's like, you ask me first lah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see how. <laughs> <laughs> I check my schedule. Check my schedule. I'm busier than Aaron Paul. 
I got Power Rangers. <laughs> I'm Zordon, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> would you watch this Breaking Bad movie because uh, apparently it's not set to be a theatrical release it's supposed to be uh, like, like, Netflix. Like, a, Netflix. like a Netflix thing or some sure. of the other streaming services just because I enjoyed the series but since I've already have I mean like people who have Netflix it's playing so might as well watch yeah, it yeah I mean I'm, yeah. I'm just, not giving it an extra money for it yeah. so like just, just add it to the watch list yeah. <laughs> at the end of the series yeah. alright final bit of news on this episode of the podcast Avengers 4 which is coming out in May of next year we're really excited about that because it will tie up all the loose ends that has been put out there by Avengers Infinity War like what's happened will they come back who's in the Soul Stone it might be Gamora or is it not we don't know apparently this next movie Avengers 4 which we don't have the title yet still we are going to get a trailer for it sometime before the end of the year but it has been revealed that the runtime is currently at three hours this is before edit right this is the edit that they have now okay so in an interview, one of the directors, Joe Russo, he said that as of right now, the movie is sitting at three hours, but we'll see if that holds. So it depends. I mean, these things go through like many, many stages. You have test audiences. You have the executives who sit in there. You probably have the president of Marvel and Disney who will watch it and will say, I think it's a bit too long. That wasn't necessary. Cut that out. Or maybe reshoots and things. I, I, I don't know. But three hours to me is long. That, what it, was the la- last three-hour movie that I, you enjoyed? <laughs> Lord of the Rings? The, yeah. And uh, to quote... Uh, the Green Mile. Green Mile wasn't three hours. That was about three hours. Two, two fifty-five or something like that. When you say three hours is, is long, the <clears throat> response that I get in my head is uh, Remy Malek's when they were talking about Bohemian Rhapsody 2. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that, came to, that came to mind. But uh, I, I will watch it. Three hours. I think if it is a good movie, I will... It will pass by yeah, without yeah, you noticing. Yeah, yeah. Here's a tip though. Don't bring a drink. <laughs> I never do. <laughs> I never do. All right. Timmy, are you excited for a three-hour yeah. movie? Like, I mean, if it's, it's Avengers, uh, so I'm okay with it. If it had the same pacing as Avengers Infinity War, where it kept you engaged and it, you mm. know, it kept it in the air, you were always engaged and watching the screen. There was never a time where you would be like... Oh, this bit's boring. I can check my Instagram for a bit. Uh, Yeah, we never had that. No. But three hours would be stretching it. It just depends. We've never had Law of the Rings for three hours in the cinema. Director's cut only. Yeah, I think so. No, I don't think the cinema cut was three hours long. Okay. So there you have it. That's the news this week on the Wine Crew Podcast. If you want to get in touch with us here on the show, you can check out our contact links in the description down below, which leads us to our next bit of the show, which is our review of Bohemian Rhapsody, which is a biopic of Queen and the frontman, Freddie Mercury. Yes. I'm not going to lie. I like this movie. Uh, There were certain parts where it had me in tears. And uh, let's see what Timmy thinks about this. Uh, I think it's a good movie. Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned b- before the podcast, I, I never really grew up with Queen because my brothers didn't like um, British rock bands. Mm-hmm. So we mostly listened to like Metallica. <laughs> so it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. I, did, I, I didn't fall asleep like in the other, bi- bi- other biopics, <laughs> which is good. I like that I understand how Freddie Mercury gets his uh, motivation to write songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, as a musician, like, oh, yeah, I know how it feels like when you get writer's block and then this is as if, like, he's just born to be a songwriter, a singer. Yeah. Was... There was that one scene where they all went away to, like, a farm and they were writing mm. the new album and he finished writing Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. And he visibly was like moved by by what he was writing now, and he was like, "Oh my god, that's it!" Like he mm-hmm. wrote it, and yeah, it was like perfect, perfect. And he looked very emotional, like he wanted to cry. And yeah, I, I think like because you have a, a bit of a musical background, yeah, a bit. like that sort of resonated with you a little bit. Yeah, it's like, okay, yes, I understand. Like you see where the character is coming yeah. from. Del, what did you think of Bohemian Rhapsody? Very good, very good movie. One of the best this year, if not the best. But 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 because <laughs> there are a lot of cuts in our version of the movie so i am planning to watch it again when i'm in philippines next week Mm -hmm. to see the uncut and see because there are certain scenes which like didn't really flow certain characters that suddenly came in and i don't know where or how they met so i'm guessing that it was from a longer version from a previous scene Uh, yeah yeah Yeah. and uh i i want to see the full thing so but as it is it is a really good movie and i think it is brian singer's best uh movie since usual suspects or oh days of future past Mm. 
Uh, which is a surprise to me because I was like, wow, this is this is actually really good. Yeah, and also I think he would have been uh, nominated for Best Director. If he didn't if, leave. Yeah, this or the movie could have been nominated for Best Picture as well. But Rebi Malik definitely best uh, actor. Actor, yeah. Other than that, the uh, the rest of the they were so close to the real people, the real life counterparts, right? they, yeah. Especially Brian May, he's she looks. Exactly I thought like that him. that is Brian May, and the others, the other guy, uh, Deacon or Deaky, he is funny, man. He <laughs> is like every decade he has a different look. Yeah, yeah. So funny when <laughs> uh, he reached the the uh, the final one the. F- his final transformation like a with a floral <laughs> shirt yeah. and jeans and going on stage like that uh, it's, apparently because uh, I was just watching like a few YouTube videos about Queen apparently he is like he was just happened to be there when they were looking for a bass player yeah mm. I was like you, hey uh, do you play bass yeah uh, you, you want to join the band yeah. <laughs> something like that so he was like yeah, but okay th- this movie deviated a lot from what, what really happened. happened yeah and they actually went through a lot of basses to before getting this one which is good because he, he wrote that song, uh, what's it called? The Ice Ice Baby one. Uh, the, under <laughs> the, Pressure? The, the, yeah, yeah, Under Pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that scene <laughs> the was really ice good. Ice <laughs> <baby one>. <laughs> <laughs> I know Under Pressure came first. Okay. But uh, the, the, uh, the, be- the villain of this movie was done so well because you really hated this guy who uh, caused his death, right? And uh, the real one of the real heroes is also... Mary? Yep. Yeah. Mar- um, uh, the, the real life Mary Austin. Yeah. Who was his fiance or would No, no, no. They were married. They were married. They were and married then, yeah. But but they were never legally separated, right? I don't know if they were or not. The movie never really Yeah, the movie never really touched on it. But yeah. by all accounts, from what I've seen in like the couple of documentaries that I've watched, they never really ended the marriage. It, it was just he, she, right. was, she was always a part of, of, of his life, which yeah. But I, I, I don't know because in this movie she ends up with someone else. Yes. Yeah. Um, Which I don't know if she did in real life. Yeah, same thing. I, I'm, I'm not sure if she did. The actress playing her was really good as well. Uh, and of course, Rami Malek is phenomenal. As close to Queen, uh, 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 Freddy as Freddie Mercury. Uh, anyone yeah. could. Like the first shot of him lying on the pillow. I thought, wait, that, that looks like Freddie Mercury. It really does. Face. Yeah. yeah. I like the fist bump. Like right. whenever he does yeah. the fist. Whatever. Yeah. It's like, oh, that really looks like yeah. Freddie Mercury. He had a couple of movement coaches uh, sure. work with him for this yeah. movie. You you have to. And, and it really shows because right after we watched the movie mm-hmm. uh, in the middle of this week, I think the next day I just fired up on YouTube the Live Aid concert from 1986. Right. Yep. And I, I couldn't tell the difference. I was like, I. Yeah, it, it looks. It really looks. Exactly it the looks same. the same. Hmm. Even the placement of the cups on the piano, or the Pepsi cups, right. and I was like, "Yeah, that was a detail that they actually put in there." And I'm very curious to see whether the stage hands were all wearing like the exact <laughs> same clothes uh, as they did in real life. Did Deacon, Deacon wear the same floral shirt? <laughs> I I think so. It I, should I be. Think he did. Yeah. Uh, that that was of course the climax of the movie, the end of it, where it, it was a nice send off, I guess, for the movie. Like this is you know the one of the greatest or well, it has been labeled one of the greatest concerts performances of all, of time. all time and it's a it's a nice sort of end to the story of this movie which centers around Freddie Mercury because that's when he finds out certain things that led to his demise due to his lifestyle and Dell said the villain of the movie um, whether or not these things are 100% true I can't verify it's not. It's yeah not. it's not yeah but for the purposes of the movie it, it does send you in the right emotional mm. directions you mm-hmm. know at first you ride the wave of them being famous and this and then there's the confrontation with the band members and then he's alone you feel that isolation and and like you said Rami Malek's performance yeah. is what really brings that in I don't see why he should not get an Oscar nod for this yeah. The way they okay, so so I don't really like some of Queen's songs. Like Bohemian Rhapsody has never <laughs> resonated with me because I, I couldn't understand it. Okay, but after getting context and a, like a backstory to some of the songs, and then listening to it again, it it really gives me the feels because I can now put a story to it and feel why this song existed. So, like, towards the end of the movie, no, not towards the end, but close to the end, I was watching some scenes and I have to tell myself, stop crying. (laughs) 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 Otherwise, I just lose control and I keep... 
tearing yeah. up. I, I was going to cry as well at one point. I was like, no, hold it in, man. Hold no, it in. The only part yeah. that I almost cried was when he met his father at the end. At the end. Yeah, right. Almost, right. almost at the end, yeah. Right. It was heartbreaking. Right. But, but the, end, the ending of this movie, uh, well, towards the end, uh, this is spoilers. You've probably seen it in the trailers. This is oh, a you bi- know the story. Yeah, this, this, this is a biopic no. uh, of Freddie sorts. Freddie Mercury dies. So, so, so you know. <laughs> um, towards the end, the, the climax of the movie is the Live Aid concert, which they, apparently they were not on the ticket to perform for. Yeah. I, I, we, we don't know whether this is true or not. Yeah, we don't. Uh, but actually. he reconnects with his partner. Uh, Who they've never broken up in real life. Yeah. They, the, they, they, the, they, the band they, itself. Yeah, yeah. correct. They, and they, they, he he never broke up with the uh, the villain yeah. until much later after the concert. Yeah. So they sort of tied everything to this one cornerstone, which was the concert. And he just, for the sake of the movie, sorted out everything and tied up all the loose ends. And you right. know now we're going to have this epic performance and it ends and on a high note. So, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't mind so much of how not accurate it is. It's their right yep. to tell us how that's true. Yeah, they it's it's a to. it's a movie. Yeah, it's, it's, a, a movie. it's all fiction as well, even though based on real events. But it was a good story. Yeah, it's very well writ- written, very very well written, very well directed. Even when Fletcher came in to do the uh, the additional or to complete the movie. Because Brian Singer had to be fired. Yeah. Uh, I think he left. No, he was fired. He was fired. fired yeah. Okay. So the uh, you you don't really you can't really tell which are from Fletcher and which are not from Fletcher because it I was still. <laughs> I I still find it very seamless. Okay. Everything yeah. like it was quite the, seamless. Yeah. The the flow, the tone itself, right? Not like uh, Justice League. Yeah. <laughs> Tonally, if you can tell the difference, like, but this one you can't. Color also different. <laughs> <laughs> there was one character which was actually my favorite, and this is besides the main cast. It's the guy who was the head of EMI Music, right? Uh, played by played by Myers, Ma- Mike Myers, Myers. <laughs> Michael Myers. Mike, 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 Mike Myers, sorry. Mike Myers. <laughs> Mike Myers. That, that was from the last show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played by Mike Myers, and he plays it, and it's so tongue in cheek. It's so meta this character that he plays because at one point he was arguing at the fact that Bohemian Rhapsody will never do well. No one's going to listen to a six-minute song. And then he says that line which made me laugh in the cinema. He said, I can't for the life of me see teenagers in the car banging their heads to this song, which is in reference to a character that he played in Wayne's World, the beginning of the movie. They play Bohemian Rhapsody in the car and they bang their yeah. heads in the car. And okay. I thought I thought that was a very nice tie-in to him as a person. Yep. <laughs> like so, yeah. That line was specifically written for that. Yeah. No one laughed in the cinema except me. Like I, I laughed and I was like looking around. No one gets it. Uh, Alright, it's just me then. <laughs> I, I know my age. <laughs> Alright, let's do ratings for Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, let's start off with Dell. I like to reserve the uh, final rating, but for now, it's an 8. 8 reflective sunglasses out of 10. Nice. All right, Timmy? For me, 8.5 half mic stands <laughs> out of 10. Half, it's not a half mic. It's just a rod. <laughs> right. Initially, it was a half mic stand. I'm going to give this movie a 9.5 radio gagas out of 10. <laughs> Because that was the song that got me up in the cinema. I mean, TB can attest to this. Uh, I, yeah, I was, I was embarrassed for a bit. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> he was like, <laughs> All we hear is Radio Gaga. And my hands came up and it was just me. Um, uh, and then <laughs> our friend John. And then John John uh, chimed in because yeah. I made him do it. Yeah. I was like, John, you got to do it, man. Yeah. I was like, nope, this is not the time for us to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the cinema. We're having fun. Okay. Uh, so there you have it. That's the Wine Crew review of Bohemian Rhapsody, which is showing here in local Brunei cinemas. Tell us what you think of the movie. Leave us a comment on this uh, podcast or if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, tell us what you think and maybe whether you liked it or disliked it. Uh, which leads us to our next bit of the show, which is... Oi, apa liat-liat? Apa liat-liat? Hoi, kan semua kan? Apa liat-liat? Apa liat-liat? Eh, nak kuat semua kuat. Hmm, apa liat-liat? See what see. Siap liat. Yep, that's right. It's Apa Liat Liat and it's what else we've been watching besides Bohemian Rhapsody. Let's start off with Del. Apa Liat Liat. I was on the plane watching Our Brand is Crisis. It's uh, Sandra Bullock and Angelina Jolie's father. No, wait. That's not right. Ex-husband. Brad Pitt? No, no, no. Before Brad. Oh, uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Bob. Okay. Uh, it was a nice movie, except for the fact that in the uh, third act, kind of just 
plateaued and nothing really happened. What's it so about? It was, it's about this campaign manager for Mexican's upcoming presidential election. And uh, Billy Bob and Sandra Bullock were in different camps and they were just trying to win the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they worked on the campaign. Oh, okay. Is it a comedy or is it a... No, it's a... Uh... Dramedy? A dramedy? Yeah. <laughs> Is that even a thing? Uh, I, I, I've read it before, so <laughs> might might be. Dramedy. Comedy, okay. drama, okay. comedy, but the ending, the race when they when they when somebody won, it wasn't exciting at all. It was just looking at the screen and the numbers. So uh, they could have done something more with it. I thought more drama, more <laughs> comedy. <laughs> I also watched. I also finished Jessica Jones season two. It's really good. I I've always been a fan of Jessica Jones, and this one was breakout performance by the the woman who plays her mother. She is so good. And uh, I, I'm very big fan of her performance. So that's Mrs. Jones? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> All right, Timmy, up uh, a I finished Daredevil season three. Yeah. It was good. I'm, I, I'm halfway uh, yeah. in, in that. Uh, I got hooked. I finished it in three days while I was in Japan. <laughs> What? Uh, on Netflix, yeah. You know, before I go to sleep, I watch like, Netflix. Like, like an episode? Yeah. Okay. You mean you didn't make full use of your time in Japan? No, and, uh... it, was, it was so much walking that I, by 9 o'clock and night, I was like, I, I just want to rest. <laughs> 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 so... Yeah, I finished it while I was in Japan and right now I'm also watching season 2 Castlevania the Ooh. anime on Netflix. Mm. How many episodes? Uh, I think it's about 12 episodes. Okay. Nice, nice. Which leaves me I only checked out one thing uh, this week which is a movie called Welcome Home starring our friend Aaron Paul. <laughs> 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 Although he doesn't say bitch in this one. <laughs> and also uh, starring alongside him is Emily Ratajkowski. Uh, she's that girl from the uh, Robin Thicke music video and apparently also in Gone Girl. No, apparently she is. She, oh, she is in Gone Girl. I don't remember her in Gone Girl at all. Because uh, in Brunei, it's uh, if you watched it here... No, I didn't. I Censored? Yes. Oh, it was oh. all censored. Okay. But yeah, this this was an okay movie. It's, uh, it's, it's this weird sort of pervert... No, okay. The story is, it's a couple. It's Aaron Paul and Emily uh, Ratajkowski. And they're a couple who are trying to mend their relationship. So they go on like this trip to Italy and they Airbnb in this beautiful like winery estate thing. And then this creepy guy shows up and the house is wired with cameras and this. And it becomes like this weird like mind game scenario between the two of them. Rom-com slash... No, it's not a rom-com at all. This is a... this is a, this, but for couples. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> Saw but for couples. This, this, it's not a gory thing it's not a it's just a thriller i guess so it's a waste of time you mean yes i <laughs> it is a waste of time it is i i want my hour and a half back I, it, the story was just so thin i'm surprised uh, that you watched it until the end well to be fair i was half watching it i was doing some work while uh, it was on so okay. so you can focus on your work right yes, <laughs> yes something less important so you concentrate on the more important thing so that's the podcast this week we've done it this is another episode of the podcast do join us next week what are we talking about next week What's coming out next uh, week? Spider's Web. Girl in the Spider's oh, Web. Oh, Girl in the Spider's Web, which is the follow-up to The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh, uh, it's a different new, different uh, version. This Wait. has nothing to do with Spider-Man, right? <laughs> no, it has nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know the girl with the dragon yeah, tattoo? Yeah, I, I watched that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one is done in... With, this is like a reboot. A reboot? A reboot, but in a telling of a different oh, it's story. it's still from the same book. Still, there are four books, oh, okay. I think. From the same four series, books, yeah. From the same series, the same characters. But it's no longer Daniel Craig and uh, Rooney Mara. Mm. So it's but done by... Another girl. So, this is like a prequel. For that movie. No, wait, wait, wait. This is a sequel to the first three. The first three was done originally by the country called... <laughs> <laughs> Where, where was it done? Ah, uh, Swiss, no, Swiss, Sweden. Swiss? Sweden, no. I think Sweden. Yeah, yeah. Sweden. So first three was done by Sweden, and then the American rebooted the first movie. Movie. And this one is actually the fourth book, which has never been done in Sweden, but now is done in Hollywood first. Ah, oh. uh, okay. So right. now that you've told us all that, I don't think I want to watch this movie. It's so complicated, but we'll see. Um, I'll have to check what's up. I don't know what's showing. Uh, you, I know what's showing. BTS. You want to watch that? What's BTS? <laughs> the Korean. <laughs> Pop group. Burn the stage. The number one billboard at one point in the oh, US. Gosh, he doesn't oh, know. The Korean boy band. Yeah. They have a um concert um movie. movie. Yes. 
Oh no, 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 no. Are you no. sure that's the only thing that's coming out? Uh, I hope not. Well, we'll see. We'll see you next week on the next episode of the Wine yeah. uh, <laughs> Crew Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and thank you to my co host Del and Timmy. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.